Hey everyone, this is uh, day three, week one, where we're doing uh, portraits under different lighting conditions. So first day we did, I painted my mom, which is a cool, overall cool light, cool lights, cool shadows. Then day two, Spanish Tuesdays, Martes Español, we did, you know, a figure that was enveloped, that was just surrounded by this green, kind of oozy <laughs> uh, light. Um, so it, it's almost like radioactive light. And then day three, we're gonna give uh, sunlight a shot. And this is like tough to do. This is because for me as a painter, every time I think sunlight, I'm thinking of Soroya. And nobody can paint sunlight, like direct sunlight like him. So I'm always, always wary of everything that he did and everything that was, you know, that was gained by painting by all the efforts that, you know, he went through when he was painting, you know, from life, sunlight. And it's so well understood. And it, obviously it kind of makes sense because he was working, you know, after like, you know, the impressionist sense of color. So there was a lot of like sensitivity to new color. Um, there was new colors available, obviously, like in the late 19th century, early 20th also. So that also like expanded the painters. There goes Mugman. I wanted him to be in the shot all the time. There goes Mugman. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is almost channel uh, all, his, uh, <laughs> all his teachings and but try to do my own thing which is somewhat more a little more abstract so what i think is gonna be uh happening with with this one is that i'm i'm thinking about a more almost yes naturalistic way of looking at sunlight but also like impressionistic and post-impressionistic but also like a very abstract sense of color so think of like bay area artist uh deben corn you know, that sort of stuff, like Wayne T. Bug, like all that kind of cool stuff. So I'm going to try to organize all these colors in a very abstract way, but also make them configure something that's a portrait. And I think that if I can do that properly, then, you know, our first day, which was cool light, cool shadow, then, you know, an overall enveloping sense of light with a specific hue with that, you know, radioactive green, uh, and then you know, this one, they're going to look and feel very, very distinct, very different. And, and this is just, again, a, a reminder that what we're trying to do here is to understand ourselves not as a very kind of uh, one dimensional painters, like I know how to do one thing and that's what I'm going to do all the time. Uh, this is a huge challenge because we only have, you know, one session. It's an ala prima session. And we have to try to get to the core of the idea of what we're painting. And we have to do it, you know, uh, in a solid way, in a very direct way. And we have to, you know, gauge it properly in the end and see if we were able to, you know, achieve something that is, you know, close to the intent that we originally had. And, you know, that's, that's a huge undertaking. That's a very, very tough undertaking. It's, it's like four hours of super, super intense painting. So uh, the, the idea is to, to, to not only see ourselves as the painter that, that you know, we were in terms of you know, our upbringing, like this is the way I was taught how to paint and this is the way I know how to do things, but also like rediscovering ourselves as painters, that understanding that painting is something that's so much bigger than just the school of thought or just, you know, what our training taught us. Um, we can be, you know, this expansive kind of definition of, of painter. And that's what I'm going to try to explore. Is it always going to be great? I'm sure it's not. I'm sure I'm going to struggle, a, you know, a ton of times with my paintings. But, you know, I'm going to push myself. That's the whole point of this. It's not just to teach you guys how to how I do things. No, no, no. it's also trying to push myself to limit and seeing if I can, you know, put myself in a problem and if I can just weasel my way out of it just with with all the uh, the closeness, the kinship that I think I have with painting to see if I can just work, you know, really. And this is like, you know, work working in the 
you know, most honest sense of that word. Just work, <laughs> just work the crap out of, uh, uh, of that painting. Our, you know, phone is going off. I told you guys, this is, you know, this is our life. So that's how it goes. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, one of the most attractive, I think, parts of, of choosing this image that, I, um, that I'm about to paint was that little triangle, you know, that cast shadow that the nose, you know, is um, projecting onto her left side of the face, our right. I just saw that triangle of just warm, this kind of mix of super saturated, you know, warmth within the coolness of the shadow that I, I, I felt, okay, that's, that's gonna be, you know, the kind of focus of, of my painting. Uh, now, the little triangle, you know, makes up about, I don't know, not even 5% of the painting. So if you think about it, you have to surround that tiny little triangle, which is like kind of off-centered, um, with a lot of stuff that, you know, makes sense, that kind of houses that tiny little moment and makes it exciting. So I, I realized from the, uh, from the beginning that if it was going to be about that triangle, I might as well also find other shapes that could make, you know, the, the, the painting interesting. Um, so by other shapes, I, I mean, um, I could emphasize like other geometries within, you know, the, the, um, the portrait and the uh, shadows that were cast, you know, on the portrait, on the face, and the shadows that were cast by the forms of the uh, portrait itself. So I kind of pushed my, um, my portrait off to the side uh, just so I could have also, if, it was a, if, if the story was about this cast shadow, then you know, the, cat, the, the, the shadow that was being cast by the face, by the head, uh, was probably as important as the portrait itself. And that actually gave me like a, um, like a great, great start. It was, it was when I realized like, okay, this portrait is going to be important, but you know, everything that is speaking about the uh, condition of light, which is this very, very kind of extreme, you know, sunlight just hitting the uh, head, you know, directly, then all the things that, you know, speak about how harsh this sunlight is, all the shapes that come out of this, you know, this very almost brutal. I, I actually found it very, I mean, it sounds very weird because we associate, you know, sunlight with life and, you know, something that, you know, you're usually cold and you just step into the sun and you're like, oh yeah, this is so great. But honestly, there are times when the, like the sun is hitting you like straight in the face that it feels very, very violent, very, very strong, like almost unbearable. So I actually, you know, me being like super pale skin, for me, the sun is that. For me, the sun is like something that you're like, okay, this thing is going to actually ruin my life. This is going <laughs> to, this is good. This is, I have a history in my life of just pain from just being completely sunburned from, you know, these horrible sunburns, uh, sunburns from, from just exposure to the sun. So whenever I, 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 uh, I see sunlight, I see these pictures of people like, you know, bathing in, 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 in the beach and, you know, the, like every Soroja painting, I'm like, oh, that's great, but that would have never been my life, you know. That was my life when I was a kid, but it was like constant sunburn after sunburn after sunburn, so it was like painful. So it's really cool for me when I started to think about sunlight, I was like, yeah, but sunlight is also this, the, you know, it is what gives us life, you know, but it's also this very, very, you know, violent thing. So I wanted to see if I could make the shapes all kind of tell that story. Um, not this thing that we embrace and that it's cozy and nice and it warms us up and, it, you know, everything that we associate with goodness, like it's a warm feeling. It's so nice and warm outside. No, it's like, the sun can be kind of painful and you can reject it. Sometimes when like the sun is in your eyes, I think that that's a good example of how we sometimes can um, reject uh, sunlight. So immediately I went for my cool shadows and I, you know, like a very, very 
you know, almost too simplistic formula is, yeah, you know, the sunlight has warm, like direct sunlight has warm temperature. It's a light that has warm temperature. Uh, so the uh, shadows have to be cool. And yes, that does happen. Obviously, that does happen. You know, you could you could just make a formula and say um, your light has to be, I don't know, yellow and reds and oranges and your shadows are going to be these uh, very blue greens and purples and and you're fine. And that would be, you know, a very efficient, effective way of communicating sunlight. But, you know, in a very enclosed space, light also bounces off, you know, things all the time. And so a shadow could start very cool and then suddenly form is actually, you know, from, this, from the light that's actually bouncing from your surroundings, then, you know, you're going to get all this reflected light uh, filling in those shadows. And many times it changes the uh, temperature within the uh, shadow. So there's tiny, tiny little shifts when we think about um, uh, shade, you know, in a very kind of naturalistic way. There's tiny, tiny little shifts constantly because, again, because we're not in a vacuum. It's not like sun is hitting us and that's it. You know, we're surrounded by things that are also being hit by, the, by that light. And those, you know, and light bounces off from all those things. So if those things have a very, um, you know, saturated color, that color, you know, that hue is going to affect, you know, our shadows. So we have to be super mindful of that. Um, as soon as I had those shadow masses and a little bit of like hint of the background, I went for my kind of like an overall um, tone for, for my light. And I, I wanted to really, really mask that in and just kind of drive home the fact that this is going to be light and shade. Very, you know, very, very binary things like sunlight, very warm sunlight and very cool shadows that are they're breaking in these, you know, very uh, harsh geometric shapes. And I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to design my picture um, based on, on those shapes. Um, I, again, I'm very aware of the, um, of the simple quality that I want to, you know, communicate of, of this being, you know, a warm light mass against, you know, all these like, hopefully very cool shapes of, of shadow, but I have to, you know, realize that within that mass of light, there's also, you know, these tons of little breaks in form are being, you know, described that eventually all of them put together, hopefully they'll configure this portrait. And not only just a face, but like I said, I always try to um, attach a feeling to to whatever I'm painting. So in here, I just convinced myself, okay, this is going to be a cool um, kind of excuse to speak about the uh, rejection of sunlight. You know, not, not you know, not, it, it doesn't have to be like, uh, like overly clear and, you know, just stated, like somebody's like covering their eyes, like saying, oh, this is, you know, uh, this is way too much sunlight. No, no, no. But just just maybe the way she winces or maybe, you know, the way that the, the eyes just slightly, um, slightly close and kind of clench a little bit and, and just the way the mouth kind of curls, just very, very kind of little things that make you feel, wow, that's, that's beautiful sunlight, but wow, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little uncomfortable too. I, I, I tend to love, you know, uh, the ambiguity of, 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 of feelings um, that can be tied to, to, um, to situations that we usually associate with, you know, one outcome, like, like saying, oh, sunlight is, is good, uh, you know, cold is bad. Uh, no, I, I usually try to kind of stay away from, from those very kind of simple equations. And I try to look for things that, that, um, that almost put me in trouble. And, and while I'm painting, they, they make me question and, and, you know, question myself, myself and my perception of the things that I'm painting and my history of why maybe I feel like, wow, this is sunlight, but I don't know. I don't, you know, it, I don't find it as comfortable as somebody who's able to, you know, tan in the sun for like four hours and, and feel amazing. Like, why is it 
you know, kind of uncomfortable for me. And I don't want to spell it out. Like, I don't want to have a painting that has like a narrative that is, you know, very clear and directed. I, I want to see if I can tell, you know, a little bit of how I feel uh, without the aid of that story by just using shapes and, you know, in this case, by just using a portrait and just kind of tweaking tiny little things about, you know, the portrait. So to, for, for me, that's super, super important. Now, at this stage, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy because I can kind of see my image now. Like, um, even though there's, you know, a little bit of ways to go, I see what my image is about. Like, I can see my... You know, there's the the head is in light. It, there's actually uh, shifts within that light that show me that you know there's uh, a forehead like a little bit back and a cheekbone. It's a little bit back and it comes forward like with the upper lip. The nose is coming out. The nose has a little bit warmer temperature. There's you know the lips are like super simply blocked in. But again, you know my 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 aim, my purpose is to say things, you know, to communicate something, you know, with those forms. So I can't just be happy with describing them and, you know, just leaving them, leaving them like that. I have to try and be um, a little more specific with, you know, their shape and with like tiny, tiny, you know, shifts in, in their form to try to see if, if by the end I can actually speak about this human being that's, you know, under this very, very specific condition. Um, so I'm, I'm pushing those tiny little moments of, of like super high chroma in that triangle. Cause remember that triangle was going to be, you know, my, you know, the most important uh, part of my painting, the focus of my painting. So I want to, I want to try and say, yeah, this shadow comes from this lighting condition. That's very, very warm. Um, but it's it's very if, if you think about it it's kind of weird it's very abstract because the same lighting condition that is casting that shadow upon her you know our left her right side of the uh, of the face is the one that's making this very kind of saturated triangle you know project onto her um, left side our right so it's very weird because you know you're trying to speak about the the singular quality very powerful quality of this light and there's this purple you know side uh right next to this you know <laughs> super saturated cad red you know with a little bit of green just to make those reds even redder triangle and you're trying to say yeah they come from the same place they come you know they're being born from the same uh, um like stimuli like from they, they have the same nature so it's very very weird um uh, this is, I use a round bristle brush, not, now I'm not using it, but if you saw me kind of blocking in with my round br uh, bristle brush initially, it's because I want to get like a very, the, the very big quality of light. I don't want to go in with like the smaller brushes that I'm using now initially because I, I have a feeling that I'll miss something that's bigger and far more important than than just being able to model, uh, you know, some lips or, you know, uh, nostrils or eye sockets or eyelids. Um, if that's the, the, you know, if that suddenly became, becomes the, the aim of my, um, my painting, then I forgot what was my original intent and what, you know, brought me to want to paint this in the first place. Because I think that portraits can degenerate into that, where you believe that, oh God, I have to get to that eye, and suddenly you turn on like the eye mode, and you start to remember, you know, supposedly how is it that you're, you know, the, the, that you were taught how to um, model an eye, and you start thinking a little bit, you know, almost like separately from from what was the um, this big kind of road you embarked on when you first started the painting. And that's when moments within the painting can feel very, very detached. And that's a risk that we all, all run into. Um, the cool thing about doing these daily exercises is that you, you sort of push yourself to, um, to just do, you know, to, to, you have, you set an, one objective, like a singular objective for yourself. And you tell yourself, okay, am I really going to be able to keep this up 
you know, through this whole painting or, you know, and it'll happen. It happens to you. It happens to me. And, you know, this is something that's very true and real about just the, the act of painting that, you know, we, we lose our concentration or we become like uninterested or we struggle so much with what we wanted to say because we can't quite, you know, grasp it that we start falling onto just saying, okay, I, I can, I can render an eye. So I'll, I'll just try to do like a nice eye. And it's almost like, um, we, we want to give, we want to pat ourselves in the back, like saying, okay, you know, this was very tough, but Hey, you know what, you know, you, you know how to do these two or three things. Well, um, just do those and your painting will, you know, it will look like it's yours and, you know, it will have like your signature and, you know, it will display like a, a certain level of ability or talent or however you want to define it. And that's, that's, you know, I guess that's fine, but that's not the aim of this by, you know, if, if we are pushing ourselves to do again, to do like these daily, daily, uh, um, uh, exercises, these, these encounters with paint, then if we are going to be doing the same thing every single day, then it's absolutely redundant. Then just do, just do a painting once. It, it serves absolutely no purpose for you to just repeat yourself constantly. Because what, like, what are you doing? You're not like an artisan. You, like your job is not to do this mug a hundred times the same because that's what people want. Just the same mug over and over again. If that's why you got into painting, fine. I'm, I'm not going to judge. I just think that you'd be losing so much of what's, you know, very important about the nature of painting. But what I think that we can do, which, which, you know, poses a very different, you know, kind of question is, is, is just putting ourselves in a, in a place where we feel like, okay, this is way, you know, foreign for me. This is, this is way too different. Like, um, you know, I, I usually don't paint this uh, light, light condition. I usually don't paint models, you know, on this pose. I usually don't paint people or I usually don't paint spaces or I usually don't paint indoors or outdoors. You know, whatever it is, whatever is your, your comfort zone, I'm, I'm hoping, well, your comfort zone and mine, because I obviously have one too. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not this uber talented painter that can just, you know, grab anything and just say, okay, I can make a great painting out of this. Um, no, obviously I'm far, you know, I'm far more comfortable with certain subject matter than others, but I'm going to, you know, in this two years, I'm going to try really, really hard to push myself to see if, you know, if, if I, you know, if I get into trouble to see, okay, I have like four or five hours to get out of this and <laughs> let's see how it goes. Um, so the, the way that I, you know, that I thought I could make painting something like this interesting for me that would that would pose like you know issues that are that are not common issues that I've had with my painting was to make it to make all these like shifts in in hue um you know that uh, that had to obey like a, a a value range uh I wanted to be sensitive to those shifts but I also wanted to make shapes out of the shifts out of those very specific shifts. And again, I wanted to keep the painting almost borderline, you know, abstract and see if, if in the end, like it was as exciting to see these shapes as it, as it was to not, not uncovering. Cause I think it's very clear that it's a portrait, but as it was to say, Oh wow, this is all, you know, this is all made because this human being is actually in a, situation where sunlight is hitting her you know this way and then the sunlight you know keeps traveling and keeps like projecting you know making the form project these these shadows onto other forms but you know, I, I wanted to see if i could walk you know very very finely that place where where you you want to because i am a very naturalistic painter you know at my core so i i always wanted i, I love the the ability that paint has to describe you know the three dimensionality of form uh so but i, I want to hold on to that and i want if i want to say lips i really want to try and describe like the quality of those lips and the gesture of those lips and the way they go around and if i see a nose i really want to you know noses have so much incredible structure that 
I really, really want to want to see if I could find the underlying structure of that nose and just make it turn, but make it turn sharply. And I love to do those things. But and 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 as I was saying in 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 other videos, I'm also very aware that paintings can't just be like my painting can't just be about a nose. Like I, I even feel far more comfortable by saying I want my painting to be about a triangle, like the shape, you know, this very abstract triangle that's being you know, cast onto this other side of the, uh, of the face. Like that to me sounds far more exciting. Like what, you know, how are you gonna make a painting about this tiny little triangle? Um, then rather than saying, oh, I want to make a painting about, you know, this nose or, or, or this person, you know, or, you know, just saying like, oh, it's a portrait because it's actually, uh, portraying this, um, this very specific person. But I, I want to, in a, in a way, and use not not in the utilitarian sense, and not in a like a like a power, you know, hierarchy relationship. No, no, no. But I want to see if I can use the um, the you know the the forms that I have, you know, at my disposal, and see if I could speak about something else. I, I think as painters, we we almost have that responsibility that when we observe something, yeah, we you know we're perhaps moved by its very nature. But we have to be able to say, wow, you know, kind of dig in deeper and say, why, why is this moving me? And, and try to uncover, you know, the reason that you're being attracted to what you're looking at and then emphasizing that quality through paint. You know, that, that to me is a good painting. It doesn't matter, you know, how you resolve that painting, but if you're able to just say, you know, I was looking at this um, uh, stimulus and I was able to identify why it moved me you know, and you could do it while you're painting. You don't have to have it like super clear, you know, before you paint, like beforehand. But if you're able to identify that and while you're painting, you're able to say, wow, this is, you know, this is working really well. I'm going to push, you know, these, these very specific qualities. Then I think that that's, you know, that to me is like a powerful painting, a painting that, a painting experience that can also teach you a ton not only about painting, but about yourself as a painter. Yourself, you know, first as a painter, but ultimately and more importantly, you as a human being and the way you perceive and the way, you know, your perception is shaped. Because I think that that's, in the end, we, we seldom talk about this thing, but in the end, that that's what's going to make you a very, an individual painter. You know, uh, a person, a human being, uh, a very specific human being that through paint wants to understand, you know, I don't know, in my case is is my place in the world like uh, you know the 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 my my <laughs> my purpose in all this like enormous equation i i the questions that i pose you know are through paint and the way i i think i i i give myself a chance to you know even attempt to understand you know those questions is by painting i i almost like paint them out and and so um you know, even they, they could be in in the case of this painting, just tiny little moments like saying, well, I want the lips to curl and to show the, you know, these two like hints of those uh, two front teeth. I want them to be slightly aggressive, slightly, ever so slightly. Like they could be super sensual, but also very like, like a little bit aggressive, just so you know that there's this tiniest sense of discomfort when, you know, kind of almost like staring at this, um, this, you know, overpowering sunlight. Cause I, I can't think of anything that's more powerful than, you know, uh, the rays that the sun emits. So, uh, e even the, those tiny, tiny little things and, and the way the eyes are a little bit off, even that the harshness of that highlight in in her left our right eye i i love that like i love those little moments i think that those are the ones that are like okay this is the sun is strong like this is a very very strong strong you know light source our strongest light source you know in in you know in our you know little uh <laughs> in our little planet um in our tiny little planet the the strongest, the most powerful definition of light that we could ever, uh, you know, understand, rationalize is our sun. So how do we, 
how do we say that in a, and how do we say that in a such an enclosed you know tight little space um because uh, Soroja would, you know, is the master of painting sunlight or, you know, let's say like Sargent too, but Soroja that, you know, literally spent so much time at the beach painting direct, direct sunlight. Um, there is this context that we as human beings associate with, with sunlight. You know, there's this bigger context. So if we see, if we, if we look at the paintings of the sea and if we see boats and if we see, uh, um, uh, uh, just this kid, uh, these kids that are, you know, bathing in, uh, you know, in, in the sea because they're, you know, and you can tell it's like, oh my God, it's, it's so hot outside that, that, you know, the temperature of the sea probably feels amazing. Uh, I think there's a bigger context there, but in here, and it's it, because we have, you know, such little time, it's so compressed. It's so, so compressed. And the, the, the image is so, so tight that we have to be you know, we have to be able to say, to speak about those very same qualities that Soroja would, you know, have with, you know, his bigger paintings, but, you know, in a very, very kind of simple, um, simplified, uh, almost, uh, um, you know, composition. So th that, that was, I think that that was my challenge. And I was very happy because I, even when I was painting it, I, I started thinking about, um, like Diebenkorn and very, you know, very uh, like San Francisco Bay Area uh, painters, um, like Wayne Thibault and, you know, uh, just just these very kind of staggered shapes of light. It's almost, it's, it's almost like the, if you eliminated our definition of, of if, if, if we could just erase our definition of what, you know, of how we identify ourselves as like, oh, there's another human being there. You know, like like the sense of 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 this, you know, these these forms configuring features, very specific features that we associate, you know, you know, to uh, human beings. If we just looked at the shapes, it's a very very abstract painting. And I, I you know, I I got really excited in in saying, okay, let let me see if I can make all these shapes just kind of like do this little symphony. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, of of little bits of light and color, and I I think that that was my um my you know I, I'm happy because I was able to do that not not because I was able to say portrait within the you know this very strong light but because I was able to to say you know those very kind of abstract qualities and it was weird because I started with Soroja but then I thought a very kind of you know, expressionistic, very abstract, even though it's figurative, but it's, they're very abstract, like Thibault and, and, and Diebenkorn. And they brought me back to uh, Soroja, but not, not the big, bigger paintings of Soroja, but the sketches and not the sketches that he would quickly do at the beach, but the tiny little sketches that he would do on like tiny, tiny pieces of cardboard that are just like, you know, these almost like floating little notes of color that are incredible. Like, when I know that by themselves, they'll just look like it's almost like you're cleaning your brush on like a little piece of cardboard. But when you think about that, that's where he was, you know, almost like translating all of his, you know, perception, all of his, you know, uh, um, just all of the stimuli of sunlight. And, and that's that's those are the places where he was trying to solve a very, very highly complex problem. Then you you realize, wow, this is fascinating. Like these these tiny tiny little sketches, they hold so so much power and so much importance for him too. Um, so I I associated, I think I associated this painting with a little bit of that, and I was very very happy with you know the 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 sort of route that that this single little you know four hour act of painting, you know this journey that it took me. Um, from a very naturalistic way of painting light to a very kind of abstract, almost express, you know, expressionistic, almost abstract way of understanding, you know, figurative work and its surroundings, to all the way back to saying, okay, but this is a very impressionistic kind of understanding of light. And I was like, oh, this is beautiful, because this is about the wholeness of painting. You know, in in a couple of hours you can speak about the <laughs> almost like centuries of art history and and you know that was that was it i i think that <laughs> even if it sounds like okay you know you're tapping into centuries of 
oil painting just by doing like a tiny little painting. That seems way too much. It's not. It really isn't. It really, really isn't. It's just very demanding, I think. And not demanding in the way that you think that has to do with, you know, drawing, you know, knowing how to draw, knowing how to paint. It's demanding in the sense that you have to recognize what you're trying to get out of, you know, this these four hours that you're painting. That, I think, it's the most complex issue. So, I, I but I think that that's where... Um, the most kind of nourishing information can come from when we paint. Um, the you know the most important um, a, a place where we can grow is by identifying those things and trying to work through those things while we paint. Uh, so I know that I'm not emphasizing very you know a lot of technical things that I'm doing while I'm painting, but it's because I, I want to give you guys a sense that paintings are not just about that technical part and you know when you learn how to paint or when you become you know comfortable with painting let's put it that way uh, you realize that there's so much more ahead you know there's 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 this uh, this road that you could have never imagined just opens up and you know it's not as simple as just saying oh I'm gonna make form turn or I'm, I'm you know I have to try and see how to describe an eye like that's just the very basic, you know, part of, of, of our journey. But I think the, the most exciting, you know, road that we can get to is, is again, it's a one that, um, that, uh, that really promotes uh, self-recognition and, and just shows you who you are at your core and just puts to a test, you know, your beliefs and, you know, you try to work things out and sometimes you think you know the answers to a lot of things and, you know, sometimes after a painting session you realize you don't know anything. And that's, a, that's beautiful. I think that's, that is the core of what we're trying to do. We're trying to put, you know, put ourselves in a situation where we encounter that day by day. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.